Hi folks and welcome back. It's been a while since I've uh, done one of these so I'm going to do an update. This is for the speedometer that I've been working on and if you've seen the prior series you'll know that I'm using an Arduino uh, plus some infrared sensors and then an LED or an LCD display. So I'm going to go to what I currently have uh, and then show you some of the progress I've made over the last while. Uh, fundamentally how this works is there's two IR sensors uh, about this about yay far apart and uh, the Arduino just measures the time from one to the other I measured the distance so I know what it is and then I just do the math to calculate scale mile per hour for an end scale train that's moving through that and uh, I had some original difficulties on the RER infrared sensors where they pick up ambient lights especially if you have LEDs installed so I tuned them so that that wouldn't happen and then I ended up with some more problems that I'll get into but right now I'll just show you the setup that I have need to take this off tripod and show you on the layout where the infrared sensors are there is one buried here these are 0.5 and because they're 0.5 uh, I have to put them in this way instead of horizontally now you see that blue light that's an IR light you can't see that with your naked eye only through the camera don't know why and uh, presto there's the second one so we've got those two infrared sensors as the car goes over it says oh I see that one oh I see that one and I, I know what that distance is now what are those connected to well let's go underneath the layout where I've got my temporary breadboard and I've explained all this before you can see the IR sensor wire comes in here and here and goes to my board here and here picks up positive and negative power uh, so it, it needs the make sure that's zoomed out enough for you guys so it needs the positive and negative power pickups for each of these plus one sensing wire so there's a sensing wire for that one and the green ones for that one now I have a liquid crystal display here and a light emitting diode display here so LED and LCD to display the speed and as a car goes over so I'll move this car and just show you here as a car goes over you'll see that that shows the speed 135.5 that shows the speed with a little directional arrow on it and the issue that I started to have is on the bottom of the car if you look there's different reflectivity right there's these black guys and white guys and all that kind of stuff and what that meant is as it went over the sensor it would jiggle on and off a little bit it would pick it up and wouldn't pick it up so if I go underneath here and you can see this sensor see a red light that shows power red light shows power and you'll see another red light when the sensor picks it up now I'm going to move the car really slow over here oh, missed it got the oh you see that jiggle it's on it's on yeah it's detecting 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 not detecting but the car if you look is still over the sensor we go back here and I just nudge it a little bit there it's detecting again so there's just a couple of spots on the cars where it doesn't pick pick it up and when you see the code you'll understand what I did I went ahead and I created a bit of a loop that says uh, I'm gonna read this sensor X number of times three and uh, I'm going to wait a very short period of time, very short delay. And if in that time, in that those three reads, if I pick up anything, I'll assume that I've got a read. So that's how I fixed that. And that seems to be working well now. The, I'll zoom the car across. 
and you can see 176.5, 176.5. Of course, that scale uh, mile per hour because that's what I've chosen to use. Now, the next thing up from here is uh, in order to make this functional, there's a couple of things that I, I want to do. And I'm going to just change back to the to here for this because I can't hold it all that steady and I'm going to talk for a little bit which you may or may not care about. Anyway, the next thing I'm going to do from here is this Arduino Uno that I've been using is bigger than I want to use. I really want to use an Arduino Nano. An Arduino Nano is smaller, looks like this. Okay, now this particular one, come on focus camera, has got headers soldered onto it already. Uh, so I can plug it into a breadboard and theoretically I should just be able to swap this out for the Uno. They're basically the same except this is a much smaller form factor. And so the next test is I want to do that swap and see if I can get this guy working uh, on there. Then up from there, I have a couple other additions that I'm looking at. First up, I have to find where I put it. Ah, it's over here attached to another uh, that I have. Is this guy. This is an OLED display. And... Come on, buddy, focus. So the OLED display is just a different way of displaying, and I want to see if I can get the OLED display to work as well. Then I have a choice. Which one of these do I want to use? Well, once I know they're all working, I can pick any one of them I want. And then finally, I don't know where I put it, but I have a real-time clock. And the real-time clock module that I have, the Arduino Weeds, is one that also has a temperature sensor in it. So I'll be able to display that. Now, on the LED, the nice big red one you saw, I can't use it on there because the LED is uh, only for the basically four numbers. So that's all you can do on it. But the LCD I can display temperature on. Uh, and I can display time, and certainly the OLED I can. The nice thing about the OLED is I can change the size of the characters as well. So a little bit of experimenting just to see if I can get all this stuff working, and then once I've got it working, then I can sit down and figure out, well, now that I know that it works, uh, what do I want to put together? Because ultimately I don't want this thing plugged in down here, hanging up, want a nice compact little unit that I can just glue underneath the table or screw under or whatever and there it is. Once I do that once I do that and get my camera off to show you once I do that the plan is where you see all this stuff dangling down I'm going to do hard wires into my little um, nano unit and I'm just going to go ahead and hot glue it in here or somewhere in there. Then I'm going to add another speedometer over on this side somewhere. Uh, I'll see which way, which spot has the best wiring capability, whether it's there or whether it's on this spot. Or I may just decide to do it right in the middle of the double crossover. Uh, we'll figure that out. Then I also have to figure out, well, where's the display go? It can't go under the table. It's got to go somewhere on top. Not a lot of room for it in here. I often sit down and work using JMRI and need to see the speedometer. So it might be worthwhile putting a couple, both of them in here, or maybe I put them in this area here. That would actually be a good area. Anyway, um, I have options for doing that. Now I'm going to get on and I'm going to try and wire up the Arduino um, Nano and see how it works. 
So let me get a brad board and start working on that. So I need to go and unplug each of these and plug them in here. And if I look, this orange guy is a 5 volt and the white guy is a ground. And if I look on here, let's take the 5 volt first. Well, I'll unplug it first. And so we'll get rid of the 5 volt and we'll go over here to these are very small writing ah, there's 5 volt pin 5 volt pin is right there and then the ground pin is 2 over already downloaded the speedometer sketch. So let's see if it works. Wow. Works perfectly. Well, that's a little fast. Can't see squat on this. Do reset on that. So we have a counting down on the reset there. Yeah, that's reasonable. Yeah. So that's working fine. Now I'll verify this. I have a portable one that I bought. But that's all looking good. So the next thing up is I want to install the OLED module, which I happen to have over here. And in order to do that, I'm going to let you look at. Well, that was interesting. Uh, yesterday I talked about how I wanted to put an OLED display on and I've spent uh, most of yesterday afternoon, most of yesterday evening put the OLED on and it wasn't working. So I did a whole bunch of testing all to say that the, the OLED consumes a ton of memory on the Arduino and with the amount of code that I've got in for my speedometer can't use an OLED. If you wanted to use it for a sign or something, that would be fine. If you used um, an Arduino Mega, which has more on it, that would probably be fine. But for what I'm doing, it, it just, yeah, it, it doesn't work. So I've abandoned all that, which means I'm down to my uh, original LED and LCD. I did add a real-time clock in, though, uh, so that you could see the uh, it displays the current uh, time uh, there's not enough room for date uh, and temperature so I'll show you that
So here's the display. This is what I'm running incidentally. So again, you get right over top, you see the nice purple showing that the infrared emitters are working. And we'll just get this guy going a bit. And then you look down here, you'll see 23.53 on here. It shows the time and the current temperature. And then it will, both of these guys just blank out shortly thereafter. And I'm now coming in backwards. And you can tell on here because the little arrow points that other direction. 24.1, if I go to the right, it's 25.7, so. Now, I got the code working, uh, and on here you can see I have an Uno back here. Uh, I have it connected to both the uh, LCD and the LED. I have the sensors in. If you look underneath here as the train goes by, you can see that sensor go, and anyway, that was a tailing sensor. I'll go the other way so you can see both of them. So there's the two sensors. It's going to go from left to right, my left. There's the first one on, there's the second one on. A little bit of flickering as the car goes over, but that doesn't matter. And you can see here's where the speed's displayed. That's where we're at currently. Now the task is to get this guy fixed to a board, do a bunch of soldering so we don't have all these wires sitting around. So I've got to figure that out. Uh, and then I'm going to use this for speed, but I think on the front display I'll have this as well. I think I'll go with two displays to... I don't know where I'll put them yet. I'm going to think about that. I may put them both out here with the one for the other side that I'm going to put in there, which will just be an LED. I'm not going to do the liquid crystal. I'll just do the LED for speed. And, uh, but i got to figure out a mounting system for these guys first. And that'll be next. And I'm now powering it from a, a 12 volt power supply. So coming through here, through here. And I'll hit the reset button on my uh, Nano. Once it resets, uh, you can see it goes through its init countdown sequence. And goes like that, and it'll blank out. Or if a train comes across, you can see 78, 86, 85.96. So works fine. Uh, follow this cord down here, and it goes to a wall wart that's there. And that guy is a 12 volt 3 amp. It's like 10 or 11 dollars from Amazon, Amazon Prime, um, which seems to be a perfect little power supply. Now, when I get things working, what I'll do is I'm going to have this plug in and I'm going to have a power bus just for my Arduinos, which will be 12 volt, and it will go to the one that I'm going to put in over there, plus the one that I'm going to put in for here. And uh, that will power all the Arduino components. And then if I want to do more Arduino stuff, because uh, it's got three amps, that's more than enough. I can power more stuff. So that's the plan as far as power goes. That's part of the solution. I still have to figure out how to mount these two guys and where. And the other one of those that I'll have for the back. And how to make up a bit of a board so I connect everything okay. But you'll see that later once I figure it out.